Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today I'm going to give you guys the juice on one of my favorite fall fishing baits. This is something that I've kind of kept under the radar for quite some time. It's a bait that when it first hit the uh, fishing world, it took it by storm and it slowly faded off a little bit. Now it's known more as just a straight blueback herring bait. But the reality is this is one of the best baits out there if you want to mimic your blueback herring, your alewife, your ciscos, even your shad, whether it's threadfin or a gizzard shad, it's a phenomenal bait for that. And because of that, it becomes a great fall fishing bait. So specifically, the bait that I'm talking about is this one right here. This is the Berkeley Magic Swimmer. Some of you may know it as the Sabeel Magic Swimmer, but Berkeley bought it out a couple of years ago and now is making it under the Berkeley name. Uh, truly a phenomenal fall fishing bait. So there's a couple of things that I want to point out about this bait. The first is the profile. The profile mimics a herring, an alewife, a cisco, better than the majority of baits out there. Uh, it also does a really good job at mimicking your perch. So if you happen to be in a part of the country that has a strong yellow perch fishery, this is another bait that you might want to check out. But the profile of it matches the long slender profile of your alewife, your cisco, your perch. And therefore, it does a very good job at matching the hatch. Here's one of the reasons why I love it though in the fall months, especially up here in the North Country where I'm at, in order to target the trophy fish in the fall period, you want a bait that will mimic the Cisco. And the Cisco will spawn during the fall. So when your water temperature drops down into the mid 40s, you will start having a Cisco spawn up in shallower water, a lot of times on your uh, hard pack sand, gravel, rock banks, or your points. And because of that, you've got a lot of fish that are in this size and bigger, you know, they can get up to be like 16 inches long and they're up shallow and the bigger predator fish like your smallmouth, your largemouth, your muskie, your pike, your walleye will be gorging on them, getting ready for the winter months. You know, up here we get the, the Cisco spawn not too much uh, earlier than the ice forms to, to freeze over for the winter months. So you're talking about fishing in some of the coldest times of the year, but the reward is awesome because you're talking about catching the biggest fish in the lake. And this is one of those baits that I love to utilize that for because you can fish it deep, you can fish it shallow, you can slow swim it, you can swim it with an erratic action, or you could burn it if you want to, depending on what the fish are telling you for that day. Now you can get this bait in a lot of different sizes and a lot of different models. This is the 145, this is one of my favorites. This is the 125, so just as a size comparison, uh, they come smaller, you can get them much bigger. And they come in uh, sinking versions, uh, uh, floating version, fast sinking, all different sizes, all different weights. And I'll use different weights for different things. So if I'm fishing around the Cisco spawn, when I know those fish are gonna be in say less than 10 feet of water, I'll go with a slow sinking bait. If I'm fishing some of the wintering areas where I may fish some of those big smallmouth down in 35 feet of water, I'll go with a fast sinking bait. So I choose the bait based on the depth that I wanna be fishing. If you fish down south and you've got a lot of shad that are moving into the backs of pockets, maybe the floating model, even where you burn it under the surface and create a wake, it could be a great thing. You know, this bait down south, if you're on a blueback herring lake, you probably are very familiar with this bait because it's one of the best blueback herring mimicking baits on the market. You can cast it out, burn it back to the boat. It generates a lot of strikes. When I was at Lake Murray a few years ago, uh, it was, we were there in April and it was one of the big players. This one specifically, all chrome was one of the deals to match the blueback herring in Lake Mary, in Lake Murray. But just because it's good in the spring doesn't mean it's not a good bait to use other parts of the year. Uh, one of the things that I really like about this bait too is the ease of use. In the world of glide baits and swim baits and jerk baits, this bait's kind of a hybrid between all of them. You can jerk it like a jerk bait if you want to, you can swim it like a swim bait, and you can work it like a glide bait. So because of the multiple joints in it, it's got a great swimming action, but because this bait 
was originally made to really burn across the uh, through the water column it's it swims so fantastically easy because of that and i'll show you some video of it but it's a bait that you can burn or you could work at a snail's pace and it has great swimming action from a color standpoint i'm really not that concerned about it i'm trying to match the forage species so anything with some chromes and some silvers or your natural colors are going to be what i'm after if i'm trying to match the perch uh, this is a great bait if you fish in the new york region like lake uh, champlain i've had really good success in the perch colors by burning it through the water column for the smallmouth uh, but again it's just a very multi-dimensional bait that works all over the place and i would highly recommend you guys giving it a try i do want to point out from a rod and reel and tackle perspective I throw it on similar gear that I would throw a uh, crankbait on. So I've got here a longer rod. This is the NM, uh, CB905. I'll throw it on the 906 or 907 as well. It's a custom built rod by MHX. And I'll just vary the actual power of the rod based on the weight of the bait that I'm using. So I might throw the 907 with this 145. I might throw the 906 with the 125 and then the CB905. Regardless here, it's a blended rod, so it's got a good, strong lower backbone, extremely soft tip, and then I've got this paired up here. Again, this depends on the time of year. In the fall, I'm gonna throw it with the Revo Winch. This is a slow gear ratio uh, speed reel. It's a 5.4 to one, so I'm going to pick up less line per reel turn. But in the fall, generally speaking, I want a very slow retrieve. So by going with a slower speed retrieve, I'll be able to uh, keep my bait down deeper and in the strike zone longer. If I'm trying to burn it on the surface, at that point I'll probably throw it on a normal 7.1 or even up to an 8.3, depending on how fast I want to retrieve it. Uh, and I'm throwing it with just with, again, it depends on the size of the bait, but either 10 to 15 pound, 100% Berkeley fluorocarbon. I just like throwing it on the fluorocarbon because the fluorocarbon helps me keep the bait down and that's generally what I'm after. If I'm trying to keep the bait up on the surface and I'm not throwing a floater, you could think about going to a braid with a mono leader or an all mono setup if you wanted to. It just comes down to what you're looking at using it for. But it truly is an extremely versatile bait. This is one that I've got good history with. You know, I remember when this first came out, I was living in the Chicago area. I mean, it's been out for a while. I was probably almost back in my college days. And they were going for like double or triple the price that they were retailing for in the stores. They were like $15 a pop and they were in such high demand. If you were able to find them, you could turn around and sell them for like $30 to $40. And that's what I was doing. I actually had a Dick Sporting Good by my house that had a whole pile of them. And I remember making some good money on it. I kept a bunch for myself. I had a bunch custom painted and I sold a bunch, which helped pay for the ones that I had. Uh, so I was a little wheeler and dealer back then. And uh, I've always kind of just had a good, a, a good feel for this bait because I've been using it since it came out. So when Berkeley bought it a few years ago, I was really excited to see that they bought it. They changed nothing on it other than making it the Berkeley Magic Swimmer. Uh, and they've offered it in a bunch of different sizes as well now. So it's one you want to check out, guys. It is one of my all-time favorite fall baits. It doesn't generate the numbers of bites that maybe you'd get if you were throwing a, a smaller swim bait or even a smaller jerk bait. But my average size on this is really, really good. When you get bit on this guy, you know that it's most likely going to be one of the fish that you're after. And in the fall, for me, that's what I'm doing. I'm out trophy hunting most of the time. I'm looking to catch lots of five pound plus smallmouth and hopefully mix in some big walleye, some big pike and big muskie at the same time. And this is one of those baits that does that for me. So if you haven't tried the Berkeley Magic Swimmer, I'm gonna recommend that you do, cause it's a good one. So thanks for watching guys. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section, have you thrown the Magic Swimmer? If so, what are your thoughts about it? And uh, stay tuned, we'll have a new video coming out tomorrow.